All right, so what we're doing here is we're actually uh, we're fitting the scope to uh, we have a uh, ADM American Defense uh, uh, Manufacturing uh, Quick uh, Mount. Uh, you know, it's a lever mount, and it mounts on top of the Picatinny. So we needed to get the rifle together and kind of determine where we wanted the scope set uh, between these rings. Uh, I got to push forward a little bit. Uh, I don't know, that's probably like maybe a quarter inch and this might be five sixteenths to three eighths. So it's just uh, slightly forward. And then uh, you want the scope to be set uh, parallel uh, to the, the base. So the way I did that is in this case, uh, I've, get, I've got a gauge pin. Uh, it's a, I believe, um, yeah, it's a, a 206 gauge pin. And uh, I basically all I did is I, I slipped it in the bottom between, the bottom of the scope has got a, a, a flat surface on it, machine flat surface. And uh, the, uh, uh, the face of the, uh, the upper face of this uh, mount also has a machine flat surface. So with a pin in there uh, in place between the two flat surfaces, it will automatically level the scope so that the bottom of the scope is, you know, equal to the top of the uh, 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 mount. Uh, you know, the top bottom surface, top bottom, if, if that makes sense to you, of the, of the mount. So that what that does is that levels the crosshairs to the uh, to the mount, and then once the mount is mounted on the rifle, uh, you know it levels the crosshairs to the rifle. Uh, there's enough room here so that if I want to go backwards a little bit on this, and you know bring uh, the uh, rear of the scope back, I've got like two and a half inches, or I probably got a two inches I can go. This looks like a pretty good spot. So the next thing is to torque these rings, and uh, in the ADM uh, literature they say between 20 and 25 inch pounds. They tell you not to use Loctite. Uh, I believe they call it Vibratite. I'm not familiar with this stuff. Uh, hopefully there's enough left over on these screws of this Vibratite. If not, I'm going to have to get some. The other thing that they tell you is, uh, is that they want you to torque the bottom screws first and then to torque the top screws. Uh, they want to be tight against the, uh, the uh, you know, base of the scope. These are uh, uh, self-leveling or uh, self-aligning rings where, um, uh, you know, there's no lapping involved. So we're going to basically set our, uh, we've got our, our torque wrench here, our torquing screwdriver, Right now, we're going to set it at 10 inch pounds. And then we're going to kick that up to, uh, let's say, 18 inch pounds. Just under the low limit. So right now, I would like to take it to uh, back down to 10. I'll tell you what, let's take it down to 5. And just make sure that we've got some tension on these top screws. Now we want to check our pin. Uh, this is a 20 MOA uh, mount, meaning that um, I believe the scope is tilted down uh, 20 MOA. So at 100 yards, one MOA is approximately one inch. It's um, 1.047, I believe, exactly. Uh, so it's uh, about one inch and 50 thousandths. So uh, they, uh, by rule of thumb, they just call it one inch. So at 100 yards, a 20 MOA mount is raising the tip of the barrel up 20 inches. Um, that's if, and what that allows you to do is if you're going to shoot long range, let's say you're going to shoot a thousand yards, instead of having to have the travel of your, uh, you know, turret system 
to allow you at 100 yards for this rifle, I, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not that far into it, but uh, you might be talking, um, I'm sorry, at 1,000 yards for this rifle, you might be talking 60 inches of uh, turret movement that you would have to adjust for. So by having a, 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 a base here that gives you a 20 MOA advantage, uh, you've, re you know, instead of 60 inches up, 60 inches down, you've taken some of the uh, upper limits of your turret system and you've, you know, you're, you're dialing down already, uh, or I should say up already, uh, your uh, 20 MOA for your 100 yard shot. And then that gives you an extra 20 MOA when you get out to the thousand yards. If that, if any of that makes sense. But I'm just trying to show you how to get the mount on. And like I say, what you want to check now is the pin because we're kind of relatively torqued, and the pin still goes in. As I move the pin more forward, because of that uh, MOA, the pin tightens up. So what you know, as as you slide the pin forward the pin is moving basically up a ramp and it, it just tightens up between the bottom of the scope and the uh, upper face uh, bottom of the uh, mount because you don't want to get it to the point where you're you're clamping on the pin so and we're I believe at 18 inch pounds on the bottom and we're at uh, 8 inch pounds so let's increase the top to 10 inch pounds and then we'll go on the bottom, we'll go to the full 20. Again, 20 to 25 is my limit. Let's take it to the bottom limit here. Okay, bottom rings are at uh, 20 inch pounds. Let's take it to 15 for the top. All right, we're already at 10, so we'll go to 15. Movement there, movement. Movement. I'm just trying to, you know, bring them in kind of equal. All right, top is torqued to 15 inch pounds. So let's uh, do the uh, 18. And finally, uh, there's 20. Now we're going to check our pin, make sure our pin is snug. So that means that, you know, I was snug against the bottom. And being that the pin is parallel uh, against the bottom of the, uh, the mount here and the bottom of the scope, both being machine surfaces, the scope should now be perfectly parallel to the uh, scope base and then once the scope base is mounted on the rifle we're again uh, parallel there. So that's uh, pretty much it. We're going to go over the screws one more time. We've got 20 inch pounds set up. We're going to hit the bottoms just like the manufacturer manual talks about. Make sure those are tight and you want those to be done first. Uh, one thing that they talk about in the manual is that they want a uh, split or an air gap on those uh, top ring surfaces. Everything is at 20 inch pounds. Again, it's 20 to 25 is the uh, spec. So we just uh, were taking it to the uh, lower limit of the uh, specification. Um, there you have it. It feels pretty uh, rock solid. Okay, so what I made is, it's, all it is is a piece of uh, uh, small cord, and it's just tied together uh, into a ring. And all I do is I, I slip it down behind the, uh, the lever, and I pass my fingers through it, and then I hit, you hit the release button, and you pull up. And it, it because there's, there's nowhere to, for you to get your fingers in on this thing. So uh, with this small cord, you keep this in with the scope, and it'll allow you to uh, 
you know, again, all I'm doing is, uh, especially on this forward one, it's next to impossible to get in here, but you just slip, slip the cord in between. Oh, you get the idea. You know, the, the, the cord is placed in between here. You get your fingers between here. You got your other thumb pushing down on this lever, and then you just use the extra leverage you get in here to uh, pull, pull the lever out. Because these things, you know, when, once you push them in tight, they are tight. And then with them being locked, um, you know. But uh, this is the uh, ADM. I think ADM makes another version of this where they, um, they've, they've got an extension down on the bottom here. Let's see if I got a stick here. They've got an extension down on the bottom to allow you to get your finger in here. The string works just as good, you know. Uh, the problem with the string is you have to have it with you. Uh, but the, uh, also what I wanted to show you is, you know, this surface of the mount is flat right here. And that's between uh, the scope and the surface. So what we we're doing is we took this, uh, this pin and we placed it. How to do on you know on a side view between the scope and the um, the the base here, and being that this surface is flat and this surface is flat, we just brought the pin forward, and being that if you've got a a base that doesn't have the 20 MOA, you just got to get the exact size pin or spacer to fit. Uh, once you get a spacer in there that doesn't allow any side to side movement where you can cock back and forth or rock back and forth. Um, this base, you know, this flat here and this flat here will automatically make your crosshairs equal to the uh, to the base of the scope and then once that's monitored to pick it to any, you know, you're automatically lined up perfectly with the rifle at that point. But that's that's what I did there. Is that this is a round pin? It's a gauge block pin, but you know you could do it with uh, anything you find that adds up to the right dimension. In this case, it's 206 on this 20 MOA uh, rail, 206 thousandths. But that's that. Uh, so then all you know, uh, you to get it, put it back on the rifle. You always want to index it uh, forward. So this thing was I think at 32. I think it was at 32. Get this back on. Yeah. So when I say index it forward, you know, there's a, a very slight amount of play between the uh, the mount and the and the rail system. So you want to always make sure that when you put it on, you push it forward. Before you tighten, any, you know, before you click your your locks closed, and then with it indexed towards the forward, then bring it, bring your locks in, and uh, there you go. She's back on. All right, just a, a little quick video on how to get the uh, a quick way to get the scope mounted into the base so that the crosshairs are perfectly aligned. Uh, with the uh, Picatinny rail on on the rifle. All right, thanks for watching.